Good day everyone. Today we are about to present our report called Phenotypic Screening. I hope you all listen and enjoy. Phenotypic screening historically has been the basis for the discovery of new drugs. Compounds are screened in cellular or animal disease models to identify compounds that cause a desirable change in phenotype. An organism's phenotype results from two basic factors the expression of an organism's genetic code or its genotype, and the influence of environmental factors. In vitro assays present a significant advantage. Namely, this can be easily adapted to a high-throughput format for automated phenotypic analysis. In vivo assays allow direct screening of compounds in preclinical disease models. A drawback is that these models are usually lower throughput due to their intricacy. Moving on to the next segment, the process of phenotypic screening. Phenotypic discovery design consists of three broad areas. First, physiologically relevant cell types, formats, or models are to be selected. Choosing between in vitro and in vivo models depend on the relevance and ability of the simulated model to be translated to human physiology level. In vitro models are usually employed since human cell cultures like HeLa cells and stem cells correlate to the human tissues more accurately. Second is to choose an assay stimuli that optimize disease relevance. These may be biomarkers that are measurable in the chosen cell type or animal model. Then these assay endpoints or assay stimuli are measured and approximated to the clinical endpoint. This is to ensure that the lead or hit compounds have actually produced the effect as seen in the changes of the phenotypes or hitting an assay endpoint with a chosen biomarker that is to be observed. The leftmost picture shows a detailed flow of phenotypic screening approach. Molecules to be screened are derived from a molecular library. The molecules can be organized structurally or based on their proposed pharmacological effect. Once the researcher has chosen a set of molecules to be screened, then they will be screened in vivo or in vitro. Then hits or functional molecules that are able to generate a significant effect to the model are gathered. They can also be validated and optimized further to lead compounds. Then the target molecules are determined by determining in which molecule did these compounds take effect, a process called target deconvolution. Then from there, the researcher will be able to derive the optimized lead compound and a specified target. In this very sense, phenotypic screening is also called forward or classical pharmacology since the researchers have first established the effect of the compound, then its target. Hence, with phenotypic screening, first-in-class drugs are usually obtained but it does not guarantee that these first-in-class compounds are the best among other compounds under the same class. In this slide, a concrete example of how phenotypic screening works is clear in this rightmost picture. In this case, the researcher wants to seek a compound that can be able to treat Alzheimer's disease. He then sought a herbal plant that has been reported to have some effect on the CNS. He found out that an ethnic plant named California Yerba Santa or Eridiptayon californicum has been used by the lay people as an, an anti-inflammatory herb. Hence, the researcher has screened the plant's constituents on their effect on oxytosis, ferroptosis, energy loss, inflammation, neurotrophy, and a beta toxicity, which are indicative or biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease. From the screening, the researcher has sought an, a functional molecule called sterubin. Based on further cell-based or in vitro studies, sterubin was found out to exhibit potential neuroprotective effects as it has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-amyloid, and neurotrophic effects. However, the molecule has to be tested for further in vivo to establish its neuroprotection and effects on anti-aging and safety profile so that it could file for clinical trials.
Benefits and advantages of phenotypic screening includes access to pathophysiological pathways and networks in disease-relevant cellular systems to identify relevant chemical starting points, unbiased readouts focusing on disease-relevant phenotypes, access to challenging target space such as transporters, DNA repair, cycle regulation, cell degeneration or regeneration, capture mechanism based on polypharmacology, embrace multicellular environments with cell-to-cell -cell contact and interactions, and builds an internal expertise in disease biology that can leverage for clinical development. The biggest advantage of phenotypic screening is that it delivers the bioactive compound directly on an advanced disease-relevant factor. Phenotypic screening relies on an appropriate tissue or cell-based assay that can be miniaturized and used in combination with high-throughput tools. Promising examples include antimicrobial assays, cell proliferation, platelet aggregation, and insulin release from pancreatic beta cell. A key advantage of phenotypic screening over target-based screens is their ability to capture biological complexity that cannot be represented in reductionist, target-based approaches. New drug targets can be identified from phenotypic screening of known drug library that can improve the success rate of drug approval. 37% of the first in-class drugs approved by FDA between 1999 and 2008 were discovered by phenotypic screening. Improves medicinal chemistry design by enabling the discovery of toxicity mechanism and reducing the risk of unexpected failures. One disadvantage of the phenotypic screening approach is that leads often lack medicinal chemistry properties that allow therapeutic development. The chemical properties of the suboptimal leads can be improved. However, this requires a detailed understanding of the molecular target and also greater upfront investments required.